Good evening everyone, I am Mr. Ish. We will formally discuss in a short video today this direct substitution property of limits. We have looked at it in a general sense before but we've never formalized this concept. The direct substitution property of limits is an excellent shortcut to limits for polynomials, especially when you're evaluating a limit as x approaches a given value a for a polynomial. We know a polynomial could be something like ax squared plus bx plus c, anything which has a polynomial format to it. And if a function is a polynomial, in addition to that, if it's a rational function, this direct substitution property of limits would generally apply. If function is a polynomial or a rational function in a, as x approaches a, this value a is in the domain of that function, then f of x is equal to f of a as x approaches a. What does that mean? It means you could literally plug in this value a into your polynomial. The value that you get is your answer to your limit. Example, limit as x approaches 5, we have this function 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. This here very well looks like a polynomial. You know, this polynomial would clearly have a domain minus infinity to infinity. Why? Because there's no way you can zero out the denominator. There's no negative that you can bring into a radical. Everything here fits well in a minus infinity to a positive infinity domain. 5 very well falls right in here. You could literally plug 5 right into these areas of x and determine the value. Whatever value you determine will be your f of a or the value of your limit. In this case, that value would be 39. You would just be plugging it in. Another example of a polynomial. Limit as x approaches 0. 5 over 3x squared. Literally a parabola. If you know the domain of that to be minus infinity to infinity, which it is, vertex at the origin, this very well lies in that domain of this polynomial. Your answer is 0 simply by just plugging this in. This would be your direct substitution property of limits. Let's take the time right now to examine a quick succession of examples. Limit. As x approaches 2, we have a function. Let the function be 2x minus 3 and we have to determine what the limit is. Again, the direct substitution property will apply very well here because this is a linear line with the infinite domain minus infinity to infinity. 2 fits in here. You can directly substitute 2 right over here and you'll have 1 as your limit. Limit as x approaches, let's just say 5. We have 3x cubed again. A cubic function has a domain of minus infinity to positive infinity. You could literally plug this in right over here, 5, because 5 falls very well into that domain. Here in all of these instances, as we know, f of x will always end up being f of a over here. You would do 3 times 5 cubed, and then you'd have 3 times 125, and you know you can calculate that, but what are this result is on your calculator, it would be your answer. Easy, smooth answer right here. What about rational functions? Let's look at this example. Limit as x approaches 1. We have a function here, let's say 3x cubed minus 1 or x plus 3. You know in terms of a rational function, sometimes you have to examine asymptotes, vertical, horizontal, or oblique. In this case, we would have a vertical asymptote develop. x is an element of all real numbers with regards to that vertical asymptote the domain here of the denominator expression except that x cannot equal minus 3 because if x were to equal minus 3 you'd have a 0 in the denominator but 1 can very well fit right in here because 1 is not within the value which would nullify your function because the domain for this type of function rational function would be minus infinity up to minus 3 and then minus 3 up to positive infinity and 1 falls very well right over here you could literally substitute 1 into these places of x's and proceed with that you'd have 3 minus 1 or 1 plus 3 you'd have 2 over 4 and here your limit would be 1 over 2 and it would be a good limit. Here's another rational function limit as x approaches 2. We have a rational function which looks something like this x squared minus 3 over let's just say 2 plus x. You could in this instance when you're looking when you're looking clearly here in the denominator your domain with regards to that denominator expression is x is an element of all real numbers except x must be larger than minus 2. Not equal to minus 2 but larger than minus 2 because you don't want to zero out the denominator by putting a minus 2 because you'll have a radical of a zero. You don't want to zero out the denominator that's undefined and you don't want to have a negative in the denominator but any value larger than minus 2 you would say from minus 2 up to infinity being your domain would give you an acceptable answer 
and two very well falls within this realm of acceptable answers. You can plug two right here in places of x and calculate by direct substitution property. You will have 4 minus 3 and here you'll have 2 plus 2. You'll have 1 over 2 and this would be an acceptable limit answer. But there are a few exceptions to this direct substitution property which we will look at next. Now in this example here we have a rational function as x approaches 1. Literally, if you put 1 over here by this direct substitution property, you use 0 at the denominator. You'll get a value over here divided by 0. You don't want to do that. And you'd be zeroing it out. You know you'd have a vertical asymptote here at x equals 1. And we don't like the appearance of that. Therefore, you cannot just arbitrarily plug this in. But you can always simplify a rational function before you plug it in. And you can do that. You have x minus 1 times x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. These cancel out. Now your entire limit expression becomes limit as x which is 1. It's x plus 1. Now you can directly substitute into this new polynomial and your value would be 2 and it would be right. The exception here is this that do not blindly apply it into a rational function because there's always a chance of seeing a vertical asymptote at that value of a as x approaches that value a. If a vertical asymptote is developing over there, simplify your rational function if you can. If the rational function cannot be simplified, then you might have to use the Le Hopital's rule. And you know that you do the derivative of the numerator expression, derivative of the denominator expression, because an indeterminate form is at play. You remember these 0 or 0, or plus and minus infinity, or the same. You have other indeterminate forms, but these are the most common, then you use the Le Hopital's rule. Let's look at this, and this should be our last question to look at or last example kind of a, an exception falls into place especially when you're looking right over here when you're looking at this function 4 minus x squared if x is less than or equal to 2 or the function is x minus 1 if x is greater than 2 if you look here at the very first expression and you have limit as x approaches 2 this right here is your a value here for that first expression we're looking right here at the first expression. Here the a value very well falls in that domain because what is a here? a is 2 and 2 is less than or equal to 2 so it checks out. And for the first expression you can literally do 4 minus 2 square and you can actually directly substitute your a value which you have right over here and you get a limit value of 0. In the second expression you cannot literally plug in, here's my second expression, you cannot literally plug in the a value of 2 over here because it does not fall within the domain here because in this for this function this expression takes into effect if x is greater than 2 like value is larger than 2 and 2 is not falling within that domain in both of these instances you have a one-sided limit coming into play and let's look at it in the first expression you have 4 minus x squared you could graph it 1 2 3 4 it would be no different than saying minus x squared plus 4 and it's coming from because x is less than or equal to 2 you have a graph which looks something like this and then it goes down as a regular parabola the second one right over here let's look at that x minus 1 and you know x is greater than 2 if x is greater than 2 such as a number like 3 3 minus 1 would give you a 2 you'd have a 3 comma 2 as one coordinate point on this if x were literally equal to 2 which it isn't but assume if it was if 2 is placed in here you get a 2 comma 1 and you could do a open dot over here and then your graph becomes this. So this is my x minus 1 if x is greater than 2. This is 4 minus x squared if x is less than or equal to 2. Let's look at this. From this instance, in both of these instances, we have a one-sided limit. Here we have a left-sided limit. Here we have a right-sided limit. Here, limit as x approaches 2 from the left, we have a value equal to 0. And here's that value. I did not differentiate here because here I was specifically talking about the direct substitution property but here we do have a one-sided limit and I didn't say so but here it is one-sided limit here we have a one-sided limit too but only from the right limit as x approaches 2 from the right our value here approaches 1 how is it approaching 1 you look at this open value and you look across and it falls right here on 1 why does it fall right here you could literally just plug in 2 over here 2 minus 1 is a 1 in terms of a y value and you could say it's a 1 but technically it isn't really falling on this point because it's an open point but we can say limit approaches 1. Here the left sided limit is equal to 0, right sided limit is equal to 1. Left and right side limits are not equal to each other therefore technically limit does not exist as x approaches 2 
limit does not exist because for a limit to exist the right hand and the left hand limits must be the same but in terms of one-sided limits the limit does exist here on the right side it's equal to 1 here on the left side it's equal to 0 keep in mind the direct substitution property for a polynomial usually and for a rational function usually applies in those situations where at the value a as x is approaching a your function is continuous and we'll talk about the concept of continuity more so than that the function has a derivative you can determine at a therefore the function is continuous at a remember for this whole concept of continuity and differentiability if a function is differentiable it's continuous at that point a but if a function is continuous at point a it does not necessarily mean it's differentiable at that point a but in general direct substitution property of limits allows you to directly plug your value a into your polynomial or rational function if it falls in that domain of that function here in the first case a value of 2 fell into this domain in the second case a value of 2 does not fall in the domain because x is greater than 2 therefore it's outside this domain but it's very well within the domain of this expression but these additional nuances come into play over here being the left hand and the right hand limits or single side limits and in general the double sided limit does not exist for this piecewise function that's all I want to present for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.